All right, so everyone, welcome. This is our introduction to citizen science um, workshop session program, whatever it is we're calling it. Um, if anyone uh, who, you can type this in the chat or you can talk, whatever you wanna do. Uh, who has some idea of what citizen science is? Anybody? Kelly, I know you do. Groups. Um, we have people from Mass Audubon here. We have uh, people, I think, from the Girl Scouts are either here or or should be attending um, at some point, um, and a few other organizations that uh, that we've reached out to too, as well as just sending it out to everybody. Um, what we've got, uh, we've we have a whole bunch of citizen science kits that I'll be getting to in a sec. Let me start the presentation, and we'll do it that way. Introduction to citizen science and our new kits that we have. So citizen science, what is citizen science? Uh, the National Geographic, their definition, it's on the screen. Don't worry, I won't just be reading the screen most of the time, uh, but it's the practice of public participation and collaboration in scientific research to increase scientific knowledge. Through citizen science, people share and contribute to data monitoring and collection programs. So basically uh, researchers, scientists, um, anytime they need help uh, uh, collecting data for a project, they can post it on a citizen science board, uh, which I'll be sharing later. Um, and they can get help from anybody who wants to. Anytime a member of the public, a non-scientist, uh, helps collect data for a scientific research study, that's citizen science. So it's me, it's you, um, it's anybody who wants to uh, can, can help researchers really do their work and, uh, and make it a lot better. So some examples of some of the programs uh, that you can find. There is uh, the Great Sunflower Project, uh, which is all you need to do for that one is observe a flower for five minutes uh, and report how many pollinators visit. Um, they're trying to study the migration of pollinators uh, around the country. So all you have to do is find a sunflower, find anything uh, that, that attracts pollinators um, and, and look at it for five minutes and say how many bees and butterflies and, and insects come, uh, come to visit it. There's Eterna. Some of these are, are things you go out in the field and do uh, yourself. Some of them are games that you can do right on your computer. Uh, Eterna is a, it's a, a game on your computer. All you need to do is so, uh, you solve puzzles by creating RNA shapes uh, that fulfill specific requests. Uh, basically, you're just um, uh, you're, you're building RNA uh, uh, helixes using different base pairs. Um, and you're basically creating them in whole cloth, ones that don't actually exist. And then these will be created in a lab by researchers. Um, they'll actually, they'll make physical RNA, uh, uh, RNA strands um, and see if they can help in medicine uh, in the future. Then their uh, stream selfie, all you need to do for that one, uh, which is the one on the right there. Uh, all you need to do is upload a photo that you took of a stream in the landscape around it. You can be in it, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Geotag it to the location and researchers will use it to monitor the water quality of streams around the country. They'll, they get a look at the surrounding landscape. Um, they, they get a look at the water uh, and, and they can sort of map um, all around the country. And then Herp Mapper, all you need to do is record any observations of reptiles or amphibians you counter to help biologists working for governmental agencies, academic institutions, and or uh, conservation organizations create a database of what kind of uh, reptiles and amphibians live where. Um, and so they're trying to keep this to, to again, um, see how climate change is affecting animal migration and which ones are disappearing, which ones are, are popping up. Uh, so they do that. Who can participate? Like I said, anybody. This is for uh, this is for anyone to do. Um, scientists will post these projects, uh, and you can log uh, you can log in on uh, any of those places that I'm going to show you in a sec um, to to participate in them. Where can you find them? Um, so there's a couple different um, sites. The main one we'll be using is the one at the bottom, SciStarter. Uh, I'll be showing you that one a little bit more in a sec. CitizenScience.gov. Um, this is a, a government website um, that people are usually, mostly government agencies post their uh, citizen science projects to. Um, and you can go here uh, and look for projects there. There's one aimed a little bit more um, at kids and teens called Zooniverse. Um, you can look for projects there. Um, and then the biggest one is right here, SciStarter. Um, that's the one that is working uh, with the grant that we received to fund our kits. So uh, just if anybody wants to put in the chat a topic, something that you want me to look up to find a citizen science project about. Mold. All right, let's look up mold. 
So it looks like the only one that came up was something for the Encyclopedia of Life, but then you'll click on the project. It'll tell you all about it. You can read about the Encyclopedia of Life project. Once you hit visit, uh, this one, it looks like it goes, uh, let's see. Oh, and of course that one, that one was a governmental one and the website, of course, is not working, figures. Um, but one thing you can do with Size Starter that's really cool is you can create a Size Starter account, which will track all of the projects that you're working on. Um, and uh, so all of the citizen science projects you do, um, they will uh, keep track of and um, any badges you earn or something like that, they sort of gamify the whole thing. Let's see, what else are we looking for? Swamps, deforestation, chemical runoff. All right, let's see. All right, so we've had a couple of them. Ghosts of the coast. Um, there we go. Let's see. Sea level rise is bringing salt water up. Um, and so they are asking you to help document the formation of ghost forests. So presumably this is another one where you're going out with the camera, taking photos, geotagging them and uploading them to either the website or an app they've done. Some of them have both. There you go. Yes, and yeah, you can just take your cell phone out. Uh, that would be even easier. It looks like their website is all is uh, very mobile oriented. So you just upload your photo here. Um, uh, give any descriptions that you find. What kind of trees were there? What kind of leaves? All of that. You, what uh, did you encounter? Any rare, unique, or invasive species? Fill out the little questionnaire. Upload your photo, and you're good to go for that project. Let's see. But yeah, you can spend uh, hours exploring SciStarter. There's there's hundreds, if not thousands, of projects on there. Um, there there's tons of stuff for every every interest, basically. All right. So, what we have done here at the Framingham Public Library, we uh, we applied last year for a grant uh, that was a, a collaboration between Arizona State University and SciStarter, that uh, that organization I was just showing you their website for. Um, that kind of hosts different citizen science projects. Uh, the grant was to create the uh, uh, citizen science kits that we will have here at the library. Uh, anybody will be able to check them out. Um, you can use them yourselves. You can check them out, uh, like if a, a Girl Scout troop um, or something like that can check them out uh, for the troop and, and use them as groups or pass them around the kids and bring them back. Um, so, but we have three different kits. We have one, uh, uh, Light in the Night Sky, we have one for exploring biodiversity and we have one uh, um, pollinators. Um, that one will be going out a little bit more in the spring. The other two you can actually get right now if you want to. Uh, they're going to be part of our library of things. Um, for those of you who don't know, our library of things is a collection of the library that's more than just books and movies and things like that. We have everything from tents to Nintendo switches to cake pans, uh, that you, uh, different uh, gardening tools, things like that, that you can check out for free with your library card. Uh, so these kits will be going into that. So it integrates uh, with what we're doing at the library already. So here are some photos of the kits. And after the, the presentation, I'll be sort of uh, Vanna Whiting them in front of the camera too. So you can actually see what the kits look like. Um, the one on the left is our, uh, explore, uh, our pollinators kit. So that one, um, Letcher said, will be going out in the spring. Uh, it's, it's helping the Great Sunflower Project, uh, which was the one we, uh, I talked about briefly earlier, uh, to identify where pollinators need help. So that one has in it a field book of different pollinators. So uh, it'll have a whole, uh, that little um, flip book in the middle there, information on all different kinds of pollinators from, uh, from around the country. Uh, trees uh, and forestation um, um, map. The one in the picture is from Arizona because this was from the, the grants website. Ours is for Massachusetts, obviously. Um, a stopwatch, so you time your five minutes. Uh, a set of really nice binoculars. Um, and then the instructions for the grant itself, so you know uh, it tells you everything that you need to do and where to upload it and all that. Oh, and also uh, they will have some seeds too, so you can plant your own sunflowers. And we'll replenish those uh, every time the kit comes back in. So we'll have uh, we'll have fresh sheets. Uh, the one down on the bottom there is our measuring light in the night one. This is aiding the Globe at Night project, uh, which is an international citizen science campaign to raise public awareness of the impact of light pollution. So that one, the big thing in it is uh, uh, the light meter, um, which you can just go out in the night uh, uh, when it's dark out, 
aim it at the sky and it will essentially measure how much light pollution there is. So try to go away from your house so there's not porch lights and things like that. But it'll take everything uh, uh, from around uh, around Framingham, so wherever you're aiming it up at the sky, and they'll kind of get up as it, uh, more data comes in, they'll get a map of Framingham that shows um, sort of where uh, how bad the light pollution is uh, all around town. And they're doing this inter uh, internationally too. So uh, they're creating this ongoing map of uh, how bad light pollution gets in various parts of the world. And then the Exploring Biodiversity Kit up top uh, is for iNaturalist, which some of you may have used before. There's a couple different iNaturalist apps. There's one um, that you can take a photo of a flower and it will tell you what kind of flower it is. So if you're out on a walk or uh, something like that, uh, and what we're doing is the other end of it. You can download the iNaturalist app where you can upload information. Uh, it's a joint initiative between the California Academy of Sciences and the National Geographic Society to map and share observations of biodiversity across the globe. So you'll upload, uh, upload your photos uh, and any descriptions of it that you may have um, and any um, uh, uh, name, anything that you know is in the photo. Um, and so uh, when somebody uses the public facing app, uh, to aim a picture at a flower or something like that, they will have aggregated all of the data and it can just shoot up really quick an answer of, uh, of what that flower is. Uh, so how can you participate? Uh, anyone who is listening can participate by grabbing, um, checking out any of the kits we have, which I will be showing in just a sec. Um, you can spread the word about it. Um, if you're uh, in, an org uh, in one of the organizations like Mass Audubon that's here, um, we will be getting uh, uh, shortly some, uh, some trifold pamphlets that explain, um, uh, sort of go over what I'm talking about today, the different uh, kits that we have, um, what citizen science is in general, all of that. Oh. Um, so we'll do this Vanna White style. They all come in these really handy tins. Uh, it makes them easy to stack. They don't roll around. Um, they're easy to carry around and they're sturdy. Pollinators kits, they all come with this little flip book but you can open it up and it explains what the, uh, what the project is, how to do everything, uh, has a photo of everything that should be in the kit, a checklist, um, and then also has a, uh, they all have a book list at the end. So if you're more, if you're interested in the topic, you can look into it more. Yep, and you can check them out from us. Uh, anything that we don't have, we can get from another library for you. It has a little double-sided thing all about pollinators. Um, how to plant a pollinator garden, uh, how to reduce uh, your, your, your lawn, how to provide water for different pollinators. It's basically a one-stop shop basic information guide. Uh, your pollinator data sheet, um, along with a dry erase marker. So while you're out, you can record your observations on this. Uh, and we laminated it and gave the dry erase to try not to be wasteful and having just whole bunches of, uh, of paper that's single use. Um, and then, you can record your information after that. Uh, there's a handy little field book, which will stay in there. So um, don't put any personal information in it, um, but it will sort of track as we go on um, uh, who's been using it or not who, but how people have been using it, the data people have been collecting so everyone can, uh, can kind of observe it. There are our handy dandy binoculars. And I really wish we could have done this in person like we wanted to originally. Uh, everyone could have kind of looked through these kits, but come visit the library. You can check them out there or here, I should say. We have our sunflower seeds that Kelly, uh, my, my lovely assistant over here, has taken, uh, has put together. Oh yes, they are native sunflower seeds too. So uh, they, are, they are Massachusetts specific sunflowers. Uh, handy timer, clipboard if you need it, our Massachusetts tree and wildflower guide and in the kit so you don't even need to check it out uh, separately. Bees in your backyard. You can learn all about uh, all the different types of bees, what they do, how important they are. And we'll move on to the next one, which is our measuring light in the night kit. Similarly, it has the flip book, everything in it that you need, explains everything in the kit, what they do, how to use them, photo of everything in the kit. Uh, and then at the end, the bibliography, so you can uh, further reading, if you will. It has the instruction sheet for how to use the, uh, the light meter, as that's the most technical part of it. Um, and then the globe at night data sheet is uh, similar to the other one. Uh, it's everything um, that you'll need to, to record. All the data that you need. Uh, when did you make your observations? Record the date and time, where, 
uh, put down the address, uh, the, the location of it. How dark was the sky that night? It just tells you everything you need to know. We have our handy field book again. We have a red light flashlight. Uh, so you can see at night when you're doing it and it's not going to affect the light, uh, the light meter readings. There is the light meter here with the battery, so you won't need to provide your own. Um, and then we have our night sky kit, so you can sort of get, uh, it helps determine um, where you are. You line it up with the, the constellations and um, uh, helps you uh, read the night sky and sort of orient yourself. The uh, planisphere is what it's called. And finally, we have our exploring biodiversity kit. It's got the guide, gives you an overview of the kit. Photo of everything should be in there. Bibliography, handy field guide. And then this one, this one you do need a, uh, a smartphone, your own smartphone or tablet for, but we do provide this set of camera lenses that just fell out. Uh, that you can just attach magnetically to your phone. You attach this like there, basically, uh, and, and not magnetically, it, there's a clip-on thing, and then it just attaches the lens, and you can take uh, macro, uh, micro photography, uh, macro photography, wide, wide angle. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different lenses on there that you can use to try to get the best pictures to upload to the, uh, the iNaturalist app. So that's sort of the overview of the kits themselves. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know some of you have been typing in the chat and Kelly has been answering, so that's been great. But if anybody wants to unmute or type in the chat, uh, I will be answering any questions that people have. These will be available, yeah, like Kelly said, at both libraries. Um, we have uh, a total of 10 kits. Um, we have four, uh, um, the light at night kits, uh, two at each library. We have four exploring biodiversity kits, two at each library, and those are both available now. You can come in tonight actually and grab one if you wanted to. Um, and then we have two observing pollinators kits, which we will be putting out uh, March or April um, as it gets closer to springtime and flowers are coming up and that, uh, that project will be much more uh, applicable here in Massachusetts. So how long has this project been going on? Are we latecomers or newcomers? No, you are newcomers. Uh, we just barely, uh, we applied for the grant um, last year. We've been building up the kits over the last few months and they just went out uh, last week actually. Um, and so we wanted to schedule this introductory session um, right in January. So anyone who wanted to could, uh, could, could get in early. Um, and uh, and get uh, kind of first dibs on the kits if you wanted to come and do them. You can reserve them too. Um, you'll have to pick them up at the library they are they are at. Um, but uh, but yeah, you can reserve them just like uh, anything else at the library, and they'll just be ready to pick up. Or if they're here when you're in the library, you can grab one then. Uh, are any other McCullough, the main library and Krista McCullough. Yep, we'll have equal number of kits at uh, at both of them. Yes, uh, what I meant by the question is, is how about the rest of the nation? Is the rest of the nation doing this too, or is this a new project? Oh, uh, uh, the, the project itself, um, we are, I think, in the first or second phase of it. I'm not 100% sure, um, but there are, I want to say it was like 10 to 15 other libraries around the country participating in this phase of it uh, with Arizona okay. State and SciStarter building uh, these specific kits. Okay, um, thanks. And uh, so, yeah, there, we're the only one in Massachusetts to answer uh, to answer Emily uh, Melissa's question. Uh, we're the only one in Massachusetts that's doing it. Uh, I'm, I think other libraries are doing um, citizen sciencey things. Um, it's not a it's not a brand new phenomenon. Like I said, there's whole organizations devoted just to um, just to introducing projects for you. Um, but uh, but we are the only ones in Massachusetts um, doing these specific kits. And one of the things too, and especially with anyone who's checking them out early, these kits are not set in stone. Um, so anybody who, who checks them out or even just comes and looks through them, if there's any suggestions that you have for things that, uh, that you think the kits should have, um, that would be great. Uh, if the, the, the storage containers aren't working for a particular kit and you think maybe like a more of like a clear backpack type scenario uh, would be better. 
any suggestions you have, because we want to make sure these kits are as easy to use uh, as possible for as many people as possible. Yeah. Oh, and uh, uh, like we do with our seed lending library too, every spring, uh, if anybody has any sunflower seeds that they want to donate to it um, to keep it ongoing even more, uh, that'd be awesome thing. too. So it's, the kits check out for two weeks. Um, Let's see, when working with groups, are you able to check out more than one kit? Nope, you can check out, uh, uh, if you wanted to check out like one of each kit or something like that for, uh, for a, a Girl Scout group or a, a, um, the, the YMCA group or Math Audubon or whoever, uh, yeah, you can check out one of each kit. Um, and yeah, they're, they're due two weeks later or whenever you're done with them. Hey, John, can I, this is, this is Dinesh, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I joined late. I got the Zoom link just now and checked it and I connected and I know you were wrapping up, so I don't want to, ask you to repeat everything, but I see that you're recording this. Will this yes, recording yep. be made available so that I can peruse it and get yeah. the information? Yep, we'll be posting it on our, uh, uh, probably our YouTube page. Thank you, appreciate it. Oh, uh, COVID protocols regarding the kits. Uh, I mean, everything luckily, uh, or just about everything is uh, laminated. Uh, it's all plastic. So as things come in, um, we, can, we can wipe them down. Um, with their they're stored in a in a back room when they're not in use too so they're not just sitting out on on the floor um but yes that that's that's something good to uh to consider too thank you for that. like I, like i said this was just sort of an intro uh an intro session too just to give everybody an idea of what we had what citizen science was for people who didn't know um we'll probably be doing something else a little more in depth too hopefully in person uh in april because april is national citizen science month um, so hopefully we'll be able to have everyone come in um, and uh, and see the kits. Uh, maybe we'll take the camera lenses out, and uh, we can have, if kids want to participate, we can just go out around the library and have them take photos of the plants around the building. Turn it into a little bit more of an interactive thing um, as spring comes, and hopefully uh, Omicron dies down. Because dear Lord, I hope it does. Hi, my name is Ilya. Um, I'm nine years old, so uh -huh. I have a like can kids participate in this absolutely that's the beauty of citizen science um is that anybody can participate um and uh the the specific kits that uh that we chose too um there were a couple other kits um available too and that's the thing too if these do prove to if these prove to be a hit um we already have the same types of things from arizona state for other kits uh, and and we'll be building up more of them but yeah, the, the beauty of the ones we chose too is that they're all fairly easy to do. Uh, they involve taking photos of things, recording things, so anyone can do them. Um, they're, they're meant to be done. Uh, adults can do them, kids can do them, families can do them together. Um, Girl Scout troops can do them together. Uh, so yeah, they, they're, they're for anyone. And that's, that's part of the reason uh, why we wanted to get into this and, uh, and start doing that. It's a good uh, sort of community project. Uh, excuse me. Yep. My name is Justine. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I joined a few minutes back. I came late, but mm -hmm. uh, this is my first time to join this, and I wanna inquire about or inquire more about what is meant by citizen science. Okay. Yep. Um, let me go back real quick. Uh, citizen science basically is any time um, that uh, that uh, a, a scientist or researcher posts their project publicly. Um, and then anyone in the uh, anyone in the community worldwide, some of these projects can uh, help them collect data. Um, so some of the projects could be something as simple, like uh, for the kits, um, the the night the light in the night sky one. Um, all all you're doing is just going out with the light meter, pointing it at the sky, finding out how much light pollution is around, and then you go on uh, the uh, the the globe uh, the globe project. I forget exactly what it's called because uh, I don't have it in front of me. Um, uh, and upload your data to them. So you will uh, just uh, record the data from the light meter and upload it to them. Um, and that's all you need to do is just go on their website or download their app uh, and, and you can and you upload everything. Some of the other ones too, um, uh, some of you heard this, but if you joined late, um, like the Exploring Biodiversity uh, Kit um, works with iNaturalist, which is just an app you can download on your phone and all you just upload uh, the photo of whatever it was that you took. Uh, and any of the data, answer all the questions. Uh, the kit kind of outlines all the data you need to collect. Upload it to the app, and you're good to go. It's it's they make it as easy as you, as they possibly can because they want as many people to participate as possible. Uh, do you have uh, is this project time framed like it's gonna take this 
these months or a year or something like that? Oh, uh, I mean, these kits will be a permanent part of our library collection. They're, they're going into our library of things, um, which uh, uh, if, if you weren't here when we explained uh, that, we have everything from tents to video game consoles to cake pans. Uh, so these kind of fit, these uh, citizen science kits fit in uh, nicely with that. Uh, so you'll be able to come in the library uh, and and check those out with your library to uh, check these kits out with your library card and you can come in tonight and do it or you can come in six months from now and do it you can come in two years from now and uh we'll we'll still have the kits yeah and the, the data collection for these projects is ongoing so um the, 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 that's the, uh, another reason that these ones in particular were chosen um is because they're ongoing projects uh that they'll be working on for years uh so framingham is part of the same library network as natick we're all part of the minuteman library network so if you have a natick card uh you'll be able to do it you'll have to come to the framingham library to pick them up and to return them um uh because we can't send them uh through the delivery system like we do with books and movies um, or uh, uh, yeah and you won't be able to return it um in the book drop because of the materials you'll have to bring it inside the building um so you'll have to return it when it's open um but yeah uh, if you if you have a natick library card you can just come to the the framingham or the mcauliffe library like i said we have them at both uh and check them out there are there any projects where drone scan can be used not the projects that we're doing um, but if you go to the SciStarter website, which is SciStarter.org, uh, you should be able to uh, search for any projects uh, that you want. And I'm sure there's some uh, that, that would love it if you um, uh, uploaded drone photography. So, yes, because they're part of the library of things, the first time you check them out, if you've never used the library of things before, um, there is, there's basically just a little sheet of paper um, to sign just saying that like these things, like these items are a little bit different than the rest of the items in the collection. Um, the loan period is a little bit different. Um, uh, the replacement um, for of items uh, that are lost or something like that is a little bit different. Um, but we want to try to make it as easy as possible for everybody. Oh, so how do you reserve it? Framinghamlibrary.org, which is our website. Um, if you don't want to remember it, just go to Google, type in Framingham Library, it'll bring it up. Exploring biodiversity, that's one of the kits we have. First thing that pops up right here, that's what you want to look at, science equipment, Framingham Public Library. Um, we sort of just put it in with our, we put it in with our other science equipment, like our microscopes that are in the, uh, the, the library of things. And so all you have to do is right here, click request it. Um, you'll put in your library card number and the PIN number for the card, and then a little list will pop up asking you which of these kits you want. Um, the Exploring Biodiversity, Measuring Light in the Night, um, or the Observing Pollinators, which aren't available yet. You can see that one's listed as in processing. Um, we'll, like, uh, we'll put them out in the spring. Um, and uh, just hit request it and uh, it'll get you on the list for it. Right now, most of them are available. Um, so if you request it now, um, it would probably be ready for you tomorrow. Uh, you'll just, uh, to pick it up, you'll just go to the, uh, the circulation desk, um, which is the big desk uh, right when you walk into either library, uh, the main library or the McAuliffe branch, um, and uh, tell them that you had a citizen science kit reserved um, and they'll grab it for you. So yeah, all you have to do, hit request it, put in your library card information and you're good to go. All right, if no one else has anything else, uh, we will end it for tonight. Thank you all so much for attending. Uh, thanks again, the kits are here. You can grab them whenever you want. Oh, uh, my title, uh, I am the teen librarian actually. Um, so I work uh, mostly with middle and high schoolers, which is one of the reasons why I got put in charge of this grant um, because we really wanna work with, uh, with youth organizations around the city, but also anyone else who wants to as well. All right, awesome. Thank you all for attending. Thanks to Kelly again for helping. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you soon picking up these kits.